So Israel's genocide has got to go. It's fucking bloody. It's bar, uh, you know, bru uh, it's brutal and barbaric. It's absolute fucking animals, goddamn fucking psycho animals who hasn't evolved a bunch of fucking chimpanzee, a bunch of fucking monkeys, just hurting whoever the fuck they can hurt. Um, the the shit that Israel's doing is fucking despicable. It's fucking outrageous. And the American government's a hundred percent for it. Even all your fucking radical Republicans and Democrats. There's no person on the right or so-called left. Um, of the American establishment, which only, you know, shows you how small of a debate we have in this country. When the Republicans and Democrats all fucking suck Israel's dick blindly, they blindly suck his, you know, it doesn't matter what the fuck Netanyahu does, they're all going to blow him, okay? Hillary couldn't fucking uh, satisfy Bill Clinton, but whenever Netanyahu wants to bomb some children, she's the first one right there sucking his fucking dick. So, that's not just Hillary Clinton, but it's even my fucking heroes of Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, and um, to a lesser extent, Rand Paul. So, you know, these are fucking radicals. They're supposed to be, you know, true tellers and people that, and actually Rand Paul, but fuck Rand Paul. That piece of shit is pretending to be a fucking Republican. His true feelings is actually in uh, solidarity with the Palestinians, but he's against empire and he's an isolationist. So what he's doing, he's playing fucking politics. He's playing fucking games. And uh, if you're stupid, you won't know what the fuck he's doing. But what he's doing is he, he actually suggested cutting the Palestinian funding um, probably about two, three, four months ago. And, um, and why he would do something like this is because he doesn't want funding for any country. He doesn't want us, you know, he doesn't like the empire, he doesn't like 900 military bases, 150 countries, he doesn't like all of the embassies, all the fucking money that we spend, and I don't like it either. So me and Rand Paul are 100%. Um, when it comes to that, the reason why he's standing up against Palestine is because inadvertently he's also against Israel. Cut Palestine's aid off because uh, we're propping up two fucking enemies. And if you cut one of them off, then you eventually, you know, you solve the problem, right? You fucking cut the legs off of Palestine without any funding. Palestine dies. If you cut the fucking funding from Israel, cut the funding off from them, they die. And so we've been funding both of these groups, you know, for decades. Same thing with Egypt. We've been funding Mubarak. We give lots of money, I think, to like Sudan, Congo. There's a whole bunch of it. But really, it only makes up about 1% to 2% of our budget. We're more or less spending money on warfare and bombs and, um, you know, nuclear weapons and new uh, airplanes and bombers and um, drones and robotics and, you know, on and on. So that's... Um, Rand Paul's playing fucking politics by pretending to be against Palestine when he's against both of the fucking things. I bet if you was to talk to him, he would be in favor of a two-state solution if you could get his true fucking opinion. But I don't even know if Rand Paul even knows who the fuck he is at this point. Um, he's sucking Mitch McConnell's fucking dick. He's sitting there talking against Palestine. He's um, hates, um, you know, fucking marijuana, even though he forced a college student to get on her knees and to pray to the Aqua Buddha. Blindfolded her, took her out to the creek, and made her get into the creek on her knees. Um, and pray to the Aqua Buddha. So he's against marijuana, even though, you know, back in the, um, his fucking college days, he's sitting there forcing women to fucking smoke and pray to the goddamn fucking marijuana. And now he's all, you know, fucking, if you're a pothead, you don't do shit and all this other shit. Get the fuck out of here. He probably thought of his most radical fucking ideas when he was lit. He probably still gets fucking lit up. And, um... And it's fucking bullshit. What a fucking hypocrite, you know? So uh, that's that's the game that he's fucking playing by pretending to be Republican, being pro-Israel like Mitch McConnell, that piece of shit, that psychotic fucking motherfucker. Just like Sarah Palin, they stand up in favor of Israel with a, no compunction, no fucking ethics or morality. Don't give a fuck. Nah, I love Israel. Don't give a fuck who they killed. Fuck you. Fuck you. If it's, you know, again, I'll, if it's my family, if it's my fucking kid, if my own kid, who I'll, you know, I have a, a right to uh, unconditionally love, no matter what my child does, I could do any fucking thing to save and make sure, you know, my kid is in a proper safe uh, position. If my child, though, is the bully, is the one who hurt somebody, knocked somebody down, took something, I would not fucking fund them. I would not say, keep going, you know, keep doing that. It's a good fucking job, you know, little Johnny, good job, little Israel, little America, good fucking job. You know, I know you're killing them Palestinians just like we killed them fucking Shawnee warriors. Good fucking job, Israel. No, fuck that. That's fucking bullshit. That was two, three, four hundred years ago. That didn't affect us, but we shouldn't be supporting the same shit today. If we were a better fucking people, we would uh, protest the Palestinians' fucking demise. Of course, free Palestine. How the fuck are you going to be against free Palestine? I'm in favor of a two-state solution. You can't live side by side, Israel, with another fucking country. No, that's they're even racist against black Jews. So it's not even the Jewish people. It's Israeli Jews. 
the fucking Israeli Jewish population cannot fucking live around any other people. And this is all in the Holy Land. Right? This is where God says, this is where, you know, all Abraham and all these fucking religions came out of. In the fucking Holy Land, there's so much bloodshed, so many dead fucking babies in the Holy Land. Oh, where's your God now? Look at all the fucking dead Palestinians. Where were their fucking gods? There is no fucking gods. You all sitting there, you Jews and you fucking Christians and you fucking Muslims are arguing about some stupid ass fucking dumb biblical story 5,000 fucking years ago. And you're murdering people over some dumb, stupid, you're over a lie. Over a lie. There's no fucking God. You're fucking, the whole fucking thing is so stupid. You're fucking murdering people because of the politics, because of fucking religion, because of racism, because of um, imperialism and empire and oppression. So fuck Israel. And here's uh, 10 brands that we can, um, you know, uh, uh, that'll help in our boycott with Israel. And it sucks. I'm speaking on an HP, uh, or, um, not an HPV, but an HP. <laughs> Uh, HP uh, machine Hewlett Packard, and it's going to be one of the machines actually that we're supposed to be boycotting. But three hundred dollar machine from Walmart, cheap. I need a fucking laptop. What the fuck? Um, but um, okay, so go on down. So uh, for future purchases, right? So number one is Volvo. So Volvo is somehow you know in with the fucking Israelis, the automobile giant. Of course, this is from menzine.com. So, you know, I'm not, this is, I'm not taking their fucking work. This is just, um, I'm enhancing their work by reading it and showing it. So, you know, and I'm creating something new because I'm adding words and uh, reading over it. Really, they could do the same thing. They're the one that made the page, right? So, the automobile giant has been criticized by BDS campaigners for supplying equipment to bulldoze Palestinian homes. So, Volvo's fucking Palestinian homes, the Swedish auto man, uh, automobile manufacturer also holds a 27% stake. In Merkavim, HP, the slogan is, if you're going to do something, make it matter for the Palestinians. It definitely matters a lot. The tech giant owns EDS Israel. So this is HP, and HP is, um, they're the fucking computer systems that set up the Israeli Defense Forces, the IDF, producing high-tech equipment like the Basel system, a biometric permit system that controls the movement of Palestinian workers through checkpoints in Gaza and the West Bank. HP equipment is also used by Israeli prisons in the army. If that is not enough, the company is also invested in the technological development of illegal sediments, taking part in the smart city project in the town of Ariel. Intel. Intel operates plants in Kiryat Gat, site of the former Palestinian villages of Iraq, Al Manshia, and Fallujah. According to Israeli historian Benny Morris, it was in the 1948-49 war residency villages were expelled in line with Israel's strategic plans. Intel, whose processors can be found in most of the world's computers, has reportedly invested $2.6 billion to upgrade its gear yet gat plants while it was working on new chips that would make computers lighter and faster. That brings its total investments in Israel to about $10 billion. Plus, it's benefited by more than $1 billion in the form of Israeli government grants. Motorola, Motorola. So, fucking cell phone company, right? BDS supporters targeted communications giant Motorola for providing surveillance equipment around Israeli settlements along the Israeli built uh, separation barrier and the Israeli, uh, the Israel Gaza border. The American multinational has signed a $100 million deal this year with Israel for encrypted smartphones for its soldiers and security personnel. So, Motorola isn't just barely fucking inside Israel, they're big time inside of it. So, you know, let's review. Hewlett Packard, Volvo, Intel, Motorola, McDonald's, the largest fast food chain in the world has been long, um, has long been targeted by pro-Palestinian groups for its longtime partnership with the Jewish United Fund. Right, I know that they always fucking donate money. Jewish United Fund, you can donate money right there in the fucking countertops. Through its Israeli commission, the Jewish United Fund works to maintain American military, economic, and diplomatic support for Israel, monitors, and when necessary, responds to media coverage of Israel. So every time you eat a fucking Big Mac, you're fucking killing a Palestinian kid. So enjoy your fucking Big Macs, you fat, overweight, fucking obese, toothless fucking losers. <laughs> Coca-Cola. The largest soft drink manufacturer in the world that houses numerous carbonated drinks under its umbrella, including Sprite, Fanta, which is, you know, created for the Nazis. Coke couldn't fucking sell Coca-Cola to the Nazis, so they just called it Fanta. Um, Schweppe, Sprite, among many others, has been surrounded by many controversies over its supposed support of Israel. I wouldn't fucking doubt it. And actually, 
in a way that sort of makes up for Fana. <laughs> um, not really, because now they're, you know, they're the genociders, and that's the problem with fucking Israel, Zell. So, you know, they created the Israeli state so that way Jews had a fucking safe place to go after the Holocaust of uh, Adolf Hitler, and now that Israel has fucking planted itself, you know, in the middle of the fucking Middle East, um, it's, um, uh, it's not playing fair and it's become the genocidal maniacs. They're the fucking holocausters. They're the genociders. They're the fucking Nazis now. And they're the ones that's, uh, you know, wiping out the Palestinians. People say, everybody's like, well, the Hamas wants to wipe Israel off the map. You know, they just got a bunch of fucking talk. They're powerless oppressed. And the powerful are the ones that are wiping them off the map. They literally are fucking murdering them and killing them and genociding. So you're sitting there going to say, well, one person bitches about something and the other person is murdering and you're going to be mad at the one who's bitching. Get the fuck out of here. And it's all about the fucking religion, too, anyways. You know, your God is better than my God. Get the fuck out of here. You're going to murder people over that type of shit. Coca-Cola Israel owns dairy farms and occupied Israeli settlements of Shadmat Mechola in the Jordan Valley in the plant and industrial zone of Kat Zurin on the occupied Golan Heights. Get the fuck out of here. Coca-Cola is actually in the fucking, in Gaza and shit. You know, there's... The occupied the territories the um you know the occupied Israeli settlements they're the ones that's encroaching upon so Gaza there's fucking borders to Gaza right this is the line where Gaza is and here's the line for West Bank but Israel just keeps on fucking encroaching and keep on fucking pushing sort of like how they came to the Appalachians mountains right in America you had the colonists the thirteen original colonies but they kept coming towards the west kept coming into Kentucky and Ohio and towards the uh, you know the sort of forestry. And so they just kept encroaching, encroaching until eventually they fucking wipe out everybody that's around and they take the land for themselves. That's what Israel's doing. They're trying to wipe out their Native Americans and their Native Americans are the fucking Palestinians. And they're going to do it and they're going to get away with it because America blindly backs them and it's like they can't, Americans can't fucking fathom what it's like to be a Native American. But you are, we're all Native Americans. We're born on this soil. So what is it like? And I guarantee people have like, you know, it's a romanticized, sort of idealized and, uh, you know, sort of perspective of the Native Americans. But they're good. They're cool. You know, they're badass. They're fucking warriors and shit. And, um, or at least that's the sort of the popular culture of them. If they were as good of warriors, you know, as they were purported to be, then they would still be alive. Um, but we were absolutely fucking fascinated with them, right? And terrified of them because we didn't know who they were and they did things different than us. And um, we, you know, uh, the white people is what I'm talking about. And the white people... We're actually fucking more brutal and more savage than the uh, than the fucking Native Americans were. So that's probably where the Native Americans got their savagery from. Hernando de Soto. So Coca-Cola Israel owns dairy phones occupy. So right, Coca-Cola is fucking in Palestinian lands. Coca-Cola doesn't give a shit. Fuck Coke. I'm not gonna drink no more fucking Coke. I don't need to drink Coke. I'm fucking make tea, black tea. I don't know from Kroger. It's probably some fucking poor kids from. Haiti or something that's making them. But from Kroger, I'm just going to make sweet sugar. I don't even know where the sugar comes from. I'm, I'm going to have to look where my... I'm going to pay attention to what I'm putting in my body, okay? I'm going to start paying attention to these things a lot closer. Um, where does my sugar come from? Where does my, my tea come from? I don't fucking know. I have no idea. Kroger, that's where it comes from. Danone closed to two decades ago. Danone opened its uh, research and development facility in Israel, the Danone Institute. Not that surprisingly enough, the French company also owns 20% share of Israel's second largest food company, the Strauss Group. I don't know anything about Danone. Estee Lauder, the American conglomerate home to big brands such as uh, DKNY, Donna Care in New York, Tommy Hilfiger, Mac Clinique, amongst many others, have been targeted by BDS activists. I don't know what BDS is. <laughs> uh, due to the pro-Israeli activities of its chairman, Ronald Lauder. Lauder is also current president of the Jewish National Fund, a quasi-government agency whose main function is to uh, legitimize Israeli occupation of Palestinian land. In fact, an American-based group led a boycott in the country with their estate slaughter campaign. Marks and Spencer. Since the beginning, it's been linked to Zionism. I don't know anything about Starbucks, so fuck Starbucks. What are they doing? Um, they escalated Howard Schultz, an active Zionist, the founder, chairman, president, chief executive officer of Starbucks, was honored by the Jerusalem Fund of Ash Hator with the uh, the Israeli 50th anniversary Friend of Zion Tribute, Tribute Award for his services to the Zionist state and playing a key role in promoting close alliance between the United States and Israel. 
So, yeah, Starbucks is in bed with fucking Israel. So every time you take a fucking, you know, sip of that fucking frappuccino latte, you know, with whipped cream and what the fuck ever, uh, you're fucking killing Palestinians. Whenever you drink a Coca-Cola, you're fucking killing Palestinians. Every time you buy a fucking Tommy Hilfiger shirt or Donna Karen or anything from a estate lotter, Danone, I remember, it's water. That's the only thing I know about it is bottled water. And Nestle. And Nestle, that's a lot of fucking chocolate. So that's um, Swiss multinational is a good share of controversies, criticisms surrounding its big name. For pro-Palestinians activists, one of the main problems they had with the food and beverage company was the fact that it bought 51% shares in awesome investments in the mid-90s. Um, engaged in the food products. Moreover, in 1998, the former CEO of Nestle joined the Jubilee Award. I don't know. Nestle is like a big conglomeration, so it's a whole bunch of fucking specific things. I don't eat that much candy, but there's also just eating chocolate. You're fucking supporting the war and the uh, the murder of people in the Ivory Coast. So there's a Starbucks, coffee, Marks and Spencer, stay, Lauder, Denon, Coca, fucking Cola, McDonald, fucking Donalds, Motorola, Intel, HP, and Volvo. And so the 11 brands, um, the last thing I want to talk about actually with this is, um, is uh, um, Louisville. And you have the owner of 4 Street Live who is part of APAC. So Cordish Companies. So if you go to 4 Street Live, you know, you, uh, you're part of fucking... You're killing fucking people in Palestine. So if you go to fucking 4th Street Live, you don't give a shit about fucking Palestine. Um, I'm not going to read all this here. So, yeah. So 4th Street Live is also another thing. So Coca-Cola, McDonald's, you know, all those processors, Intel, um, HP, and um, the other the other ones. Intel, did I say that? <laughs> Coca-Cola, McDonald's, fuck McDonald's, fuck Coca-Cola. Um, I think McDonald's or Coca-Cola, they were actually putting the fucking, in the settlements, it was actually in the fucking settlements, like they were responsible directly. <laughs> what a bunch of assholes. Uh, I want to end it off with uh, 10 habits of healthy couples. So these, if you want to, uh, you know, be happy with somebody, these are the things that you need to do with them. And, um, I don't know. I think it's easy. I heard a psychiatrist once say that if you speak nine out of ten uh, things that come out of your mouth is positive for your um, for you know your significant other, then you'll succeed. If it's not that high, you won't. And um, and I think that's important because you have to have a, a you have to have a strong admiration for the other person. You have to like them, and you gotta like them a lot, and you gotta really care about them. You know, if you're trying to manipulate them and trying to you know kind of oppress them and shit, nobody's gonna like that. People. You, you would rather, you know, people want to be treated the way they want, you know, the way they want to be treated, you know, so doing to others, you have them doing to you. So here's 10 habits of couples that do things, you know, together. And I, I it makes sense. All of it makes sense. So I really liked it by doc, Dr. Mark Goulston on VamShare.com. So go to bed at the same time, right? So sleeping and waking up actually is sort of as like life and death, right? Sort of symbolically. So when you go to bed, when you go to rest, when you want to, you know, close your eyes and then sort of um, go into unconsciousness, you'd like to have somebody there with you. I understand that. So yes, you know, go to bed together. Cultivate common interest. When you can learn to do things together, when you can find things that you both that you know both you all like. That's the only way it's going to work when the uh, self interest intertwine. If your self interest do not intertwine and one person is just doing the other thing just for the fuck of it because the other person wants it to get done, that's not going to be fun for anybody. So they got to actually want to do it. I mean, to have a hiker, that'd be awesome. I would love to, well, you know, walk around and hike um, Daniel Boone, you know, National Forest. Walk hand in hand or side by side. I see the, the genius in this too because when you walk hand, by, hand in hand, side by side, it, there's no hierarchy. There's no sort of, you know, one's in control and the other one isn't. It's a partnership. And that's Shea Guevara, 101. Shea Guevara, he says um, that we can't, uh, uh, you can't liberate anybody else. The people must liberate themselves. So what you can do, you know, since you can't actually pull somebody else up, you can create the conditions where they can pull themselves up and you can stand right next to them and fight side by side with them.
so that's uh, that's equality and that's that's fair and that's right. So walk uh, hand in hand or side by side. Make trust and forgiveness your default mode. So in, in general, you want to trust them. In general, you want to forgive them. And actually, I, there's a, I saw like a 26 list and 11 list of things that happy couples do. So really, um, you know, happy couples probably should be reading these to each other. So they should find list of, you know, good habits of what happy couples do and then try to, you know, conform to those lists to make their relationship better and to always get better and more positive. So make trust and forgiveness your default mode. Number five, focus more on what your partner does right than what are he or she does wrong. Again, goes back to that nine, um, nine out of ten things that you say to your partner should be positive things. Uh, so in fact, negative, nobody likes criticism. And so even positive, you know, constructive criticism can go wrong because people be more resentful that you criticize them than, you know, actually sort of helping them out. And so what you would do is you do a, a praise sandwich, you compliment, you throw the criticism in there, then you compliment again. And by uh, the cushing it inside, um, you know, two praises, it makes the medicine go down a little bit easier. And I think that's more fair. That's a better way to do it. Also, not publicly, not, you know, laughing at them, but actually just one-on-one -on -one kind of talking to them. And uh, maybe month to month. I even think that the, uh, instead of saying marriage should be forever because people get sick of each other and they take each other for granted as soon as that fucking document is signed. And so it, it, you shouldn't get married, right, ever. You, if you are monogamous and you love one person and you guys stick together forever, well, that is perfect. But to sign a contract and say that you're going to be together forever and then if it doesn't work out, half your shit's fucking taken away, that just uh, makes no fucking sense whatsoever. Um, I have no idea. I see. I don't see the benefits. <laughs> I don't want for a man just to, just to get your dick sucked every once in a while. That seems like, you know, paying $10 a fucking day for, you know, um, some stripper down the fucking street would be... Uh, it'd be a better deal, but you know the, there's the relationship and it's the uh, the friendship really. So that's that's it's not just about the sex. It's so much more than just the sex. You know, yeah, if I like somebody and I truly like them, I want to have sex with them. You know, um, not just once, but you know, many times, right? But the um, it's not just about the sex. It's about so much more than just the sex. That's just a piece of it. You know, it's not possible without it, but it's not the only thing. There's so much more. There's a, a friendship. There's, a, you know, common interest. There's people looking over your interest and actually giving a shit about you. Um, people that's not looking at you like the fucking enemy and rolling your eyes and trying to, you know, mean tease and being shitty to you thinking it's cute. Oh, that's cute. Oh, you're being a, you're being a shitty asshole to me. That's so adorable. No, it's, you know, maybe if I was on the street and it was like some insignificant thing, hey, can I get that ball? Oh, you want me to get this ball? Okay, cute. But if it's something like, um, you know, I need an extra $20 to get to this job interview so I can get this thing. What? Do you want $20? Um, yeah, I do. Can you help me out? Or is, what, what's happening right now? I don't know what this is, you know? And um, <laughs> it's not cute. It's not fucking cute when you're fucking with my life is what I'm trying to say. So, you know, understand that, understand that my reputation and what, you know, me being on this planet means something. And, um, and it seems like logic really. So I, what she does for me, I do for her, of course. So yeah, focus on what she does right. So what does she do right? You know, being nice and pleasant has its, um, it has its day, but really I want a woman that I could talk to as a friend, as an equal, as a person that sort of, you know, looks at life as partners and looks at it together and, you go down, I go down. You go up, I go up, you know? Um, so. Hug each other as soon as you see each other after work. Another good one. I've uh, actually read about the health benefits of hugging. When you hug other people, it's actually, you, you need to survive four hugs every day. So if you don't get four hugs every day, then you're being deprived. And I know this is America, so there's alienation everywhere. There's a lot of people that's being deprived of their four hugs. There's a woman that actually has a cuddling business, pays $60, and then she goes cuddles with people for an hour. No sex, totally plutonic, just cuddle. Just, uh, you know, just lay down and hug, and that's it. And so um, there's, let's see, four hugs for survival, eight hugs for maintenance, and then 12 hugs for growth. So if you actually want to get better, you know, um, sort of spiritually, and connected with the world, you need to get four, you know, at least four hugs to survive, five, uh, eight to maintain, and then twelve to grow. And um, cuddling—that's probably better than just a hug here and there. But probably you should get several hugs, right? So say I love you and have a good day every morning. 
I love you. Have a good day. Of course, be optimistic. Always, you know, want the best for the other person. Genuinely care about the other person. Genuinely empathize with what, you know, the other person goes through. And, you know, I want you to have a good day. I want, you know, your experiences today to be good. Um, you know, so it goes with the sort of, you know, it's common, common, common courtesy in a way, but it kind of goes with the whole, uh, saying good night every night, regardless of how you feel, um, and going to bed with each other. When you wake up with each other, that's life is beginning. So when life begins, you want to say, okay, we're going to do this well. We're going to try to be as optimistic as, you know, best we can. And if shit happens throughout the day, well, you know, you can just keep pick up and go on, but uh, start your day out strong and then, you know, end it off with a good night and make sure. Um, you know, regardless of how you feel, tell them good night. Good night. Yes, I don't want you to die at night. You know what I mean? Um, good night. Take a breath, and it'll it we'll do this tomorrow. Do a weather check during the day. So I guess that means like check your relationship, sort of. Hey, hey, babe, what's up? Call your partner at home or at work to see how his or her day is going. This is a great way to adjust expectations so that you're more in sync when you connect after work. For instance, if your partner is having an awful day, it might be unreasonable to expect him or her to be enthusiastic about something good that happened to you. So, hey, guess what happened to me? Something really fucking good, and, uh, wow, I'm so excited for you, but, you know, I'm sitting in fucking shit. I'm in a fucking sewage, you know, I'm in a septic tank right now, so, um, it's, I probably am going to die here. There was actually a story about Russia where all those, it's, fu it's sad, it's not even fucking funny. It's, uh, just people kept on fucking falling in the septic tank and dying, and then they, they would suffocate. The, the mona, the, um, the aroma, and the, the fucking shit, I don't know. They fucking would fall in, the, they fell in the septic tank and they fucking died. And then someone else jumped in after them, and then they died. And then I think someone else did, and I was like, shit, by the fucking, you know, by the second time, you think, you know, my God. But if they're your loved ones and you just want to rescue them and save them, you think maybe if I get in, I can get them out somehow. I don't know. Be proud to be seen with your partner. Kind of goes without saying. If you're embarrassed of who you're, of who you married and who you're dating, and uh, you never want anybody to see, you know, who you're with, and um, that's gonna be, a, that's gonna put a strain on the relationship because you'll never want to go outside with them, right? You'll never want anybody to see um, you two together, and um, and so that'll be a problem. In fact, if you can't be outside with your partner, then you fundamentally probably don't even like them. You know, if you if you care more about what some other perspective, some person else, you know, outside your house, what they give a fuck about more than what your own um, partner gives a fuck about, then, you, you know, you care about somebody else more. And so that's a, you know, that, that'll be a problem. And, um, and it also sounds like you don't even really like them. So, you know, just for sex, you just keeping her just for sex. You got some little Miss Ugly that you keep it in your house just for fucking sex and you don't want to go outside with her. Well, you know, I get that, and um, and I know women who have just uh, you know fuck buddies sort of like that. But it's not good. It's not a good, healthy relationship. You know, eventually that that relationship is going to go downhill. Um, it's not going to succeed. It can't succeed into the long run. But I don't know. You know, actually, in my older ages, I don't know what the fuck works and what doesn't work. I have uh, loved and lost, and you know, I've got a couple hits, and I've struck out. So I played the game. Um, but it seems to me that the ones who actually stick out the longest are the oppressors. When there's some asshole fucking saying, you shut the fuck up and you do as I tell you, they tend to keep the motherfuckers forever. I even had a lesbian woman tell me this exact same thing. Ty. Ty from um, you know the West End, from 32nd and Woodland. Uh, and Ty, what she had said was that... Um, you have to keep on them. You know, she had a, she was dating a beautiful fucking hot, sexy fucking black woman. And she treated him like a fucking man. Like, you will respect me. You will do as I tell you. Now go do this. Now go do that. Ordered around like she was nothing. But really, you know, she was the one in charge, right? She was the cute one. They had to follow her. But it was like, no, you will respect me. No, I'm serious. I'm the man around here. And, um, and her, you know, her, um, advice to me was that you always got to be on them. You always have to impress on them. You always got to impress them. No, I'm not going to fucking do that. If you can't treat me like a regular fucking person, if you're not a mature enough woman to actually talk to me like I'm a person instead of just some fucking, you know, John out here with a dick, just some fucking, you know, animal that just wants to go around fucking everybody. I'm sorry that, you know, my uh, male counterparts, they, they act like that. I'm, I'm sorry that they fucking harass you and sexually harass you all the fucking time and sex is all they fucking think about and talk about and it's, you know, for any bad thing that's ever fucking happened to you for the men. I'm sorry. 
And actually, I, in fact, it's um, it hurts me more than anything. So fuck all the men, all you male whores. I don't know a man, a single man out here that's not a total fucking whore. So for them to actually, for the double standard for women who have sex with many people, for them to be called a whore, and for that to mean something, and for men to be total shitty whores, and that's like a fucking badge of honor. Like, damn, he's getting some fucking ass. I even hear female rappers talking about this shit. Oh, you don't get no ass. You don't get no ass. Is that so? You you're a female and you're saying you are a fucking conquest. Your vagina is something to fucking take over. Get the fuck out of here. Uh, I don't I don't look at it as oppression. I don't look at it as conquest. I look at it as a, a beautiful, wonderful dance. And um and that's just the the climax of that dance. So yeah, of course you should be proud to be seen with your partner. And then that's it. Happy couples. So here's 21 amazing reasons why you should make love every day. I'm in favor of sex every day. Yes. 25 things people in healthy relationships don't do. Right? So these are... That's hard not to do something, right? It's easier to do something. But when someone says, don't touch that thing, the only thing you want to think about at the time is to touch. <laughs> don't... Hey, don't you ever put, you know, brown sugar in with your Kool-Aid. Don't you ever put brown sugar. But what if it's delicious? So... 12 things completely happy people do every day. So all these articles I think uh, people should read. So yeah, that's um, that's uh, whatever it is. Was, it was Israel or something? Or And this is the next one that we'll be talking about. So here's a glimpse. Look at Louisville's worst rated judge and her controversial comments.